Is Harry more to be blamed than pitied? Is this right? What's everyone's opinion? After hearing about some of the abuse he's been suffering in private as a result of his heart attack beautiful wife, part of me wants to pity him. According to eyewitnesses, he cowers and winces whenever Megan throws those violent tantrums of hers, refusing to fight back, and he often gets injured in some way as a result. I hear her mom is just as nasty with him, and both know exactly how to only do minor injuries to him so he can't use any against them. Should he try and tell anyone how abusive they truly are? The bulk of the abuse is verbal and emotional. But the thing is, he went into this relationship with his eyes open, willing to swallow every lie Megan told him about how evil his family was for trapping him and being racist towards her. Harry really did not appreciate what his family had done for him for his whole life, nor did he believe that they were trying to save him from a bad marriage that everyone but him saw coming. He doesn't want to admit that his family was right about Megan, that she's a liar, a cruel, abusive bully, and a hustling con artist whose schemes are constantly failing, so he's forced to go along with this whole thing, willing to suffer her wrath so long as he never has to admit to anyone that he was wrong in his decision. Now that he's made his bed, he can go lie in it. There are people who were born just hoping to have enough food. Meanwhile, he had it all. He wouldn't ever have had to work to bother with what most people have to spend their best energies and lives on, which is a job most of them would rather not do. But he's a petty, resentful, nasty little shit. He'd be that whether he was the son of a king or the son of John Gotti or the son of a quiet shoemaker. Because he just is a little shek who dresses up as an SS officer and sucks on his friend's nipple for a photo when he knows the level of scrutiny he's gonna get in return for the free stuff. All he had to do was play along. Bit by bit he would have gotten more and more free stuff, and at worst, he could have led a life of complete leisure most of the time with a few silly visits to look at helicopters or a factory that was about to open. Then back to the free stuff. And do we judge people by the woman they take up with? Of course. We do, and that woman he let himself be seduced by is a completely ugly energy from the bottom up and the inside out. How that queen lady could have ever allowed that marriage to happen is the worst mark on her character that I know of. How could she not recognize that a skank who hated, in a very ugly public way, everyone she ever had any kind of close relationship with, particularly her father, was going to militarize Harry and turn him against everyone he ever had a close relationship with, particularly his father, though his relationship with his brother was probably an even worse kind of relationship to destroy. Harry made Philip miserable, caused him terrible suffering as he lay dying. What a nasty cretin of a little shit he is to have done that, the queen miserable, and the current king miserable, and he created tension within that family and between the family and the public with the racism bullshit that they never would have had, if that sick, twisted hate machine hadn't been allowed access to their private lives. To pour that shit out to that sicko Oprah windbag who sat there clucking and sucking in air to try to earn her six million dollars or whatever she got for letting that disgusting witch vilify those people to exploit the Black Lives Matter sickness and the demise of St. George of Fentanyl. That's the evil disgusting turd they let into their family because they didn't want to send little Harry to his room instead of letting him marry the polar opposite of what they were. Were I the queen? Yes, I know. That's probably not even possible for me to imagine. In terms of the complexities of the things she had to balance and keep clear, I would have told Harry that I was willing to tolerate his having a few blowjobs from that foul witch. But if she got one drop of royal semen into her skanky garden that was it for Harry. No more free stuff of any kind. That's the only thing Harry relates to free stuff. He might have listened. Feel pity for Harry? I suppose. Sure. He has something terribly wrong with his brain. But much more significant than pity for the little man is an awareness of the damage he's done to others and the damage he's going to continue to do. Otherwise, we'd all feel sorry for rats for being rats and we'd move out of our homes to give them a nicer place to live. Besides, I have always felt that Thomas was set up. The royal family wanted to send advisors down to shield her father from the media, and even offered to bring him to the UK to stay up to the wedding. This was rebuffed by Meghan who retorted she would deal with it. Then there was no plane ticket arranged, no father of the bride morning suit fitted and made for the occasion. Surely this event called for a tailor-made suit, 
as he would be front and center on the day no off-the-peg suit would do for a royal wedding. So Thomas was alone and vulnerable and had never met Harry even after a year of courtship. Harry had met Doria though, and spent time in her company. Suddenly this man apparently appears, and worms his way into Thomas's life, and starts offering him money, for a few innocent snaps. Thomas was scammed and promptly cancelled. No forgiveness for this devoted dad now struggling with a heart attack. In fact, he was immediately replaced, not by Doria the mother, but by the future King of England, five years later, and for his one faux pas, he has lost not only his much-loved daughter but his grandchildren. It seems Harry and Meghan would have branded the Queen and family racist if he wasn't allowed to marry her, but then they did that anyway, so what was the point? It is difficult to pity someone whose choices take him to the point he is now. In fact, I have more disgust for him than I do his wife. Especially, the thing is he left because he saw that he would never be top dog. He's jealous and vindictive. If he stayed in the working monarchy, he would not have been allowed to act like a rich playboy. His position would have called for service to the community for which he received approximately two milliliters a year from his father. But like the rest of his life, he wanted the easy way doing as little as possible. That's how they found it Invictus, meant to be a joint event between both brothers. It's been rumored that Harry was already jealous of his brother's various other charities, and demanded he have Invictus games to himself. William stood back, but not before donating half of the award from a court case to the charity. His total input at that time was to attend the annual general meeting and the games themselves. You will recall his very low-key appearances at that time, appearing humble and supportive to the contestants who took center stage. The Invictus Games have now taken on a whole new platform for the attention-seeking duo. They use the event as a way to visit various countries and get treated like real royals their own little monarchy the Harry and Meghan show, preaching and showing off creating their own faux global domain, their rendition of service. We now know this whole Nigerian visit is being funded by People magazine, their film crew is in attendance, the Invictus charity, and Netflix. The whole thing is a glossy setup. No visits to the poverty-ridden areas, just spotless schools with the children of the high social side visiting a hospital where patients had been hurriedly dressed in medical scrubs with not a drip, water, or any evidence of illness, laying straight as the man-child wandered around with his film crew. Then we have Megan pretending to be part Nigerian by bronzing her face so much she looks like a clown. After the school faux pass where wearing a backless gown she had shown her white back and arms she covered herself in a pure white trouser suit with only the bronzed face showing prancing around a military base hugging all. We know nothing of the real Nigeria only the sanitized version, and looking at their itinerary the rest of the show will not be better. What service will the real Nigerians have benefited from this visit? Absolutely nothing. Apologies for the long scroll. On the other hand, if anyone blames the royal family for making Harry as impulsive as he is today, that would be truly wrong. I think they are being extraordinarily patient with him. What have they done to him? He decided to step away from royal duties. They said fine. He decided to move to California. They said fine. Because he is no longer a working royal. He doesn't get money from the sovereign grant anymore. This means the people of the UK no longer have to pay for his security and other expenses. That's normal, because he's a grown man with a substantial trust fund inherited from his mother and grandmother. His father decided to stop paying all his expenses. That's not punishment, it's called adulthood. His patronages were taken away when he left the UK, because those were for working members of the royal family, and he chose not to do that work anymore. He may have felt driven to make these decisions because of his unhappiness with his life as a working royal, but he solved that problem by moving away, and the royal family accepted that as his choice. I don't see what the problem is, he's free to make a new life for himself, and he certainly has the resources and the networks to do that. He is free to visit his family anytime he wants to, and apparently they speak on the phone and do Zoom visits on a fairly regular basis, like many people during lockdown. Well, that's all for today's video, thank you very much for watching our video, and I wanna know what you think about these issues, please express your opinion in the comments below, hope you will always be cheerful and happy, don't forget to support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel, goodbye and see you again in the next videos.